This is Rob Finfrock for Aero TV on the grounds of the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida. I'm here with Barry Pruitt with Evector Aircraft Incorporated. We're standing in front of the Evector Sportstar SL, the latest iteration of an aircraft that Barry's, what Barry well knows. I have some time in. It's uh, one of my favorites. The SL, however, sports a number of upgrades over the Plus model, the previous version. Not the, probably the most noticeable is the fact that around the canopy area, you've made some much, frankly, much needed aesthetic changes. But beauty's more than skin deep on this aircraft, Barry. Why don't you tell me a little more about it? Uh, a little bit about we went from an all metal canopy uh, operation to a composite. Uh, operation where we actually raised the firewall about two inches and smoothed out the entire turtle deck all the way back to the tail with a canopy uh, uh, fixture where it's an all one piece composite smoothed out the lines uh, we did it mostly for aesthetics uh, we had some added benefits we had some lower noise we have uh, several knots increase in airspeed without any other changes to the airframe as far as what our plans are for right now, we've uh, gone ahead and found out what we need to do to go ahead and put the 912S Rotax engine, the FAR-33 certified engine in the aircraft. Our ultimate goal will be an IFR capable SLSA. Uh, we have to make sure that the rules catch up to what we're capable of. Uh, we know our capabilities are there. We're just waiting for some guidance uh, from the federal government and the ASTM on what they expect it to be. One of the components for uh, what you're hoping for the eventual IFR compliance for the aircraft and something that impressed me very much yesterday during our uh, demonstration flight was the new EFIS system that you have in this aircraft. It's a beautiful glass panel system, wealth of information displayed, and also very bright displays. Who supplies that for a vector? Uh, True Track Flight Systems out of Springdale, Arkansas, uh, Mr. Yonkin, Jim Yonkin uh, of aviation fame for many years, all of us know and love. Uh, it's a great system. I saw it uh, about a year and a half, two years ago for the first time and decided it was something I really wanted in our aircraft. It, it's very bright. You can read it in direct sunlight from the tail. Uh, you don't have to be just beside it. Uh, the, the screens don't swap because you don't need it to. It's so bright that at any angle I can also stand out at the wingtip out here and I can still see the screen inside. So the brightness is there. The clarity is there. The pixelization is, is not a problem. You, you don't have very thin lines. Everything's bold, easy to see. You've got the, you know, an upright HSI, uh, almost a God's eye view for the HSI, so it's right below your attitude indicator. You can have a choice of doing round dials or tapes like you have on a G1000 representation. Uh, you have engine instruments across the top of the, uh, the EFIS, as well as having them over on your EMS. So your scan is now confined to a three and a half, four inch box. We have double and triple redundancy on a lot of the systems now because he also has a package where he offers for flight schools where you can have a partial panel display on the EMS at all times. So when you're doing the flight school uh, partial panel work, you just reach over and turn off the EFIS. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect including the Cirrus Airframe Parachute System. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Well, something that struck me about it yesterday during our flight, like I said earlier, there is truly a wealth of information displayed right down to whether your canopy is secured. I have not seen that level of integration yet on another LSA, so that's a very impressive accomplishment. You mentioned earlier with the Rotax 912 engine. For our viewers who might not understand the difference between a 912S and the 912 ULS that's seen in most light sport aircraft out there, why don't you explain the difference and why a 912S is required if you're hoping to seek IFR certification? 912S is required uh, by Rotax if you're going to go in instrument meteorological conditions. Uh, the 912 ULS, they've allowed for night VFR and day VFR. But if you're going to go IFR, they mandate by the, uh, their rules that it has to be an S engine. Uh, the S engine has gone through further testing. The commonality of parts is there, but they're all certified parts. They're all cataloged, just like any other FAR 33 engine would be, a Lycoming or Continental. Uh, and they were used on Diamond Katanas in that certified version as well. Uh, it gives you paperwork trail for all your parts, you know, reliability. The, the, the same reliability is going to be there for the 912S, it was there for the 912 ULS, 
but you'll know down to the part traceability. And that's really the difference between the 912 ULS and the 912S is a complete traceability. The 912 ULS has that traceability at Rotax, but that's not something they give you um, that's part of the paperwork for the 912S. Now, the Vector uh, the Sportstar was the very first light sport aircraft to be certified under the new rules when it came out. Uh, I believe it was three or four years ago. The SL is obviously the latest iteration. A Vector Aircraft Incorporated is also the latest iteration of a Vector in America. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your company that you work for today and what the company is doing to establish the Vector brand in America? Sure. A Vector Aircraft Incorporated is uh, located in Melbourne, Florida. Uh, we bring all the aircraft in from the factory in uh, Czech Republic. Uh, we have a, a direct relationship with them. We'll be able to uh, you know, have parts go back and forth on more of a consignment basis instead of uh, having to always fund back and forth, pass money back and forth across the uh, ocean. They look at it more of if they're ever going to have any other airplanes or a large fleet here, they knew that they were going to have to have a service and support system that they were in control of. And so a Vector Aircraft Inc. was created. Sunny or cloudy, rainy or bright, day or night, the future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SVT, synthetic vision technology. Some of the changes that we have instituted have been uh, all white airframes for better supportability. What I'd like to, to be able to do is we'll have an airplane delivered here to the United States that's painted in an all white scheme. What that'll allow me to do is have replacement parts painted all white already here in stock. And if a flight school needs a part or has a damaged part, they can call me and I can overnight it or UPS ground it to them and it'll already match their aircraft. That does two things also, if they have a flight school and they have special school colors or something like that, they'll have the air graphics, uh, LLC graphics that are used by Cirrus and Piper and Cessna, uh, Eclipse. Uh, it's the same company that did our aircraft uh, there at the booth. Well, let's talk numbers. Uh, we're standing in front of a fairly well-equipped model. I believe it's uh, near the top of your offerings. Tell me where the price for a basic Vector Sportstar LS begins and where it tops out for an airplane such as this one. Begins are about the 120 range. Um, if you go round dials and very, very basic, you might get it just a little bit lower than that. But as, as far as topping out, we've got guys that are ordering with Garmin 430s, S engines, leather interior, autopilots, EFISs. Uh, you're looking close to the 160 range by the time you add the, uh, the 912 S engine. It is a, there is a price delta that's pretty significant between the S engine and the ULS engine. The avionics, of course, is a big, is a big factor. Uh, you can go from, say, a, an SL40 for three or four grand, all the way up to a, a Garmin 430 that just for the radio alone is eight grand, not including installation. So, that's where our price deltas really come in. Is the the additives where they we let the customer decide what they want in the aircraft, and it, it can wildly change between what they want. You can get a very basic entry-level aircraft, or you can get one that's a Cadillac with all the bells and whistles. And that, because and, that's what the American consumer wants. He wants that choice to go from one to the other. But at the same time, we had to be able to standardize it to a point where I could still make it affordable at every level. Well, Barry, I must say you have a very impressive aircraft in the market. I wish you the best of success with the SL and any future models that you have on the horizon. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you.